Congratulations. Um, you have reached here, which means you have completed your DISC DISC report, which is a psychometric tool. It's a very amazing psychometric tool, which talks about what your behavioral style is and what's your personality all about and how you can use it to better understand yourself and make your communication a lot more better than what it is. What changes can you bring in into your own communication style, management style, so you're able to go ahead and make the best use of your own personality traits and other personality traits of different people so that you can work better. What I'm going to walk you through is a sample report. Um, so what you will see as table of contents right now, we'll walk, about, walk you through what the online report is all about. What are the general characteristics which you as a personality are showing? What are your strengths in terms of what you bring to the organization? Your own motivations, wants and needs. And we need to understand that because at times, uh, maybe our organization or my manager or somebody else is unable to fulfill those. But if I'm aware of that, I can go ahead and try and find ways to take care of these. Communication, what can I do? And how do I really behave when I'm under stress? And we all go through a change when stress comes and hits us, especially at work. What are our potential areas for improvement? There are, of course, graphs, which is based on the tool which you had used, the exercise which you had done. And what's your behavioral pattern view? Now, disclaimer, I know I'm consciously talking about it. Why? Because it's super important for you to understand that this report is something which you cannot use in isolation. A lot of times people just say that whatever is written here is the truth. Yes, it is the truth. Uh, there is a lot of science behind this. However, it doesn't mean that it's 100% accurate in all 100% of the situations. And also, if you're looking at just this report, uh, it's not going to be enough for you to create your own development plan. You might choose to even disagree with it, which can happen because, again, uh, the way this process works is if you go through any life changing event, the report might change or you change jobs or you change your role in the organization. You do tend to modify your behavior according to the organization, according to your department, even according to your bosses. However, this will always throw what your real self is and how is it that you're modifying yourself at work and what do you do under stress? So just keep that uh, terms and conditions apply to your mind when you're reading your own report. And remember, this report doesn't mean it's a good report or a bad report. It is just a report. It's always something which you use in context of the um, of the job, of the role, of the organization. It's never seen in isolation. So just remember that. Now let's get cracking. Um, it's talking about the accuracy. So you know that this is a fairly accurate tool. Um, it has a lot of high validity, reliability, which means that it's gone through a rigorous testing. And if you want to know more about it, we will be happy to share information. Now, this is about this. I want to bring your attention to these four aspects, which is dominance, influence, steadiness, and being conscientious. Uh, dominance are people, you know, these are people who are also called as um, drivers or directors. They tend to be direct and, and they guard it, right? In their communication style, they would just want to give you a task and be done and over with. They're very forceful in their communication. Influencers, uh, these are the people who are direct and they're open. They don't mind talking about what they're feeling. So relationships are very important for them. Task might take a hit. Steadiness. These people are the ones who don't like too many changes in their day-to-day -day life. They're very clear in terms of, you know, I don't want too many disruptions happening. So they tend to be indirect and open. They are very high on relationships as such. However, they don't want... Uh, to give you a very direct uh, feedback. So they could be at times be turned as, uh, you know, uh, being passive in nature. Conscientious are people, they're indirect. They are more like, you know, compliance driven uh, people. These are the people, you know, you would see where there is a very high need for 
um, rules to be followed. And these people live by the rules. They are stickler for rules and they will be very unhappy if you go ahead and sort of, uh, you know, trouble them by saying, why don't you tweak the little bit of this rule right now to, to, to be favorable towards me? They'll get very uh, irritated by it. So they tend to be indirect and guarded. So we are talking about these four styles and that's why you see D-I-S-C, that's what it stands for. And that's where the personality comes out. Now, moving forward, what you're seeing is these are your general characteristics. This is about you. So you will get an entire uh, paragraph after paragraph about your own personality, which is absolutely self-explanatory and you'll be able to understand what it's talking about. You'll still be happy to get into a conversation if you don't understand something. Once you read that, then it talks about what your strengths are, what you bring to the organization, depending on your personality style. So for example, if you're a high director, uh, so then what do you bring to the table? If you're high I, what does that mean? And what do you bring to the table? So you are having some positives which you bring to the organization based on the personality style which you have. You will be able to see that what you bring to the organization, what are your work style tendencies and how do you like to do your work? Okay. So, you know, for example, it says that on difficult projects, you may somewhat become impatient, aggressive, under pressure. Now that's food for thought. So whatever you're reading, just evaluate that. Is it serving your purpose well? Will people take you to be the leader which the organization has set you out to be? So look at the work style tendencies that you're bringing to the job and see that is it really worth it or should you drop those tendencies when you come to the job? Then of course are your motivation, wants and needs. And as you go higher up in the organization, in the hierarchy, you will see that, you know, a lot of times your motivations and your needs are not met. Why? Because let's just say the organization is saying, we assume that people are doing a great job. So maybe the appreciation culture is not much. But for example, if here it says that you're motivated by awards that recognize ability, competency, or achievements. Now, the key question then is, how do you take care of it? Maybe it's about having a conversation with your manager and saying, can you give me some feedback about my performance? What are the things you think I am doing well? What are the things you think I need to work on? Now, the minute the manager talks about things which you're doing well, you're this need which is that you want to be motivated by ability being recognized is taken care of. So look at how can your needs and wants be met in the organization and at times, how do you get yourself to be self-equipped? So you're not waiting for somebody else to come and fulfill that uh, you know, need for you. Now, what it talks about is that people with patterns like you, what do they need at times? So. Uh, again, very simple, easy explanations there. Now, this is a need. You might not have all the needs. You might have some of the needs, so don't get worked up about it. Or don't overthink about it. Yeah, yeah, I think this is what my need is all about. Then, how is it that you can improve your communication? So, for example, when communication with X person, you don't do this. When communicating, so when, um, you know, let's just say you are going ahead and talking about the two most important people you sort of interact with. So what can you do? So, um, you know, when you're communicating with other people, um, you know, uh, what your report will have is if you're, if you're communicating with an influencer, then do this. If you are a director and you're going to communicate with, let's just say, um, a conscientious person, then what do you do and what do you don't? Um, get around to doing. So it, it really gives you communication tips and how is it that you can work better with others. This specific report is for somebody who had a D style. Now, it doesn't mean that this D style is equal to your D style. Why? Because the percentages may vary. What's important here for you to understand is that what do you do under stress? So what is your potential self-perception and under stress, how can you perceived by others? So you will need to see that how is it that you are coming across, not just yourself, but to others. Under stress, what do you need? So you need to, you know, you, for example, you are a high detector. You want to control of the situation and yourself and it might not happen. How do you learn to accept that? That's important. 
and what happens when you con when you're in a conflict. So it talks about your own behaviors there. Again, this is a sample report. Your report will give you very specific information about yourself. And then for this particular person, what are the strategies that will help them to reduce conflict and increase harmony? Once that is done, then you're getting around to potential areas for improvement, that these are some of the areas you can do that. And as it says, you can look at the two most important areas you're committed to improve upon and transfer them to your summary of style page. Once you've done that, then of course, these are the graphs like all uh, psychometric tools, all uh, tests have uh, a graph. Uh, this is what the graph is really talking about. You would have already got this information um, through the written material, which is there on top. So don't get worked upon it. Don't just worry about it. What is important for you to see here is this graph, which is a natural style graph too. This is your natural self. And what happens is when you come to work, you do go through a change and it happens with everybody. So what this person does in a normal tendency becomes this when they come to work. What am I talking about? In a normal day-to-day -day life, in his personal life, this person probably has very high D, as you can see. But when this person comes to work, he realizes that he needs to work with people a whole lot. So his I becomes really high. Up. What you're also seeing is that at times in personal life, this person's compliance, the conscientious part is not very high. But when it comes to work, this person is extremely highly compliant. So do you see how these changes are happening? And what's important for you to see is that if your score is under 10 or under 9 or over 90, which means that the behavior has become a need for you. I'll be happy to go ahead and have another round of discussion with you if you want on understanding your report. Okay, moving on, it gives you like a, a scoring pattern that's saying that this is where you are in terms of, uh, you know, um, we were talking about the scoring in terms of dominance, influence, steadiness, compliance. And then it will give you like a graph here. Um, again, don't get worked up, on, uh, worked up by seeing all the graphs. Just read the language and I think you will be all set. Okay. Now, this is what I was talking about, the disclaimer. If you see there, they are going ahead and saying that this is what is happening. What they're talking about is, again, don't base your life on this. There are other parameters, other ways of receiving feedback. See how much that feedback is uh, mirroring the feedback that you're getting from this report and then make the best use of it. Don't just jump in and do it just because the disk report says that. Again, it's just a report. And then this one talks about the reliability part of it. We don't need to get around to it. This report is a fairly reliable report, but don't use it in isolation. So that's walking you through your disk summary report. And as we said, we at the Emergence will be happy to walk you through the details regarding this report. If you wish to, just reach out to the facilitator and we'll schedule some time. Thank you so much. Enjoy reading your disk summary report.